How's it going? Um, my name is David, and I mean, maybe you have or you have not seen, checked out the, my first two videos. I'm very, very new to um, YouTube and streaming on YouTube and everything. And uh, <clears throat> I had to do this today because I'm feeling, I'm feeling super, super, super pumped up. Uh, and this is, this is, you know, from my heart to yours, and really. You know, this is for whoever, um, whoever hears it. You know, this may not be for everybody, but whoever this ministers to, whoever connects with this message, this was for you. And you see, I'm in the car. I just got home. I didn't even have time. I don't even have time to get out of the car right now because I need to get this off of my spirit for you. Um, I'm feeling, I'm feeling very inspired right now because for for some some time now, I've been mulling over whether or not I should just go ahead and start these videos and talk to you and you, you know and, and and share my heart with you um, the title of of this this stream today is called what are you afraid of it's what are you afraid of what are you afraid of so as I'm talking just think about that within yourself what are you what am I afraid of what am I afraid of and I'm and I'm in, I'm I'm challenging you to be as vulnerable, as honest, um, as humble as you possibly can with yourself. What are you afraid of? Uh, a little earlier, I was having a conversation with somebody about the same topic, <clears throat> and I, I, I explained. I said, "You listen. This is not about. I'm afraid of spiders, and I'm afraid of clowns, and uh, you know, I, I'm afraid of the rain. I don't want to get my hair wet, or whatever it is." I'm asking you to think bigger than that. Go deeper. I'm asking you to step outside of the box and really think about what it is that you're afraid of. I'm, I'm, I'm challenging you to, to, to have this, this introspective moment with yourself. Please do that. And the reason I'm asking you to do this is a very important reason. And I will get to that in a second. Um, but I, but I want to share a little bit about who I am and, 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 you know, what I've lived to even bring me to this point, to even think that I could start putting out videos or, or talking to people through YouTube, you know, like you guys would even want to hear anything I have to say, you know, and I'm, and I'm trying to be as vulnerable and humble and, and, and real as I possibly can. I'm just a regular guy that understands his purpose. I understand what I'm called to do in life. Now it's taken me some time. It's taken a lot of heartache and pain and horrible memories and anger and sadness and people dying, people just leaving in my life, me hurting other people and, and having to come to the place where I say, you know what, Dave? Enough is enough. What what are you all about? What is this that you're doing? You know? Who who are you? Is there something bigger in your life that you're supposed to be doing? And I mean, this is a lifelong journey that I'm talking about. These questions have been going on in my head for a long time. And they've culminated to this one moment today where I'm talking to you and I have a question for you. And it starts with asking, what am I afraid of? What am I afraid of? Just think about it, please. Think about the life that you've lived. Think about maybe the anger that you have because the, the hand of cards that you, you have been dealt for your life, the parents that you, were, that you were born with, the dysfunctional family that maybe you had. Maybe you didn't even have a dysfunctional family, but you still feel empty. You're still searching for something outside of yourself because you don't, you don't feel this joy that you know you should have or that you see other people having and you want it so desperately. So I'm, I'm originally from San Diego, California. Um, I was born into a family with two other siblings. Um, my father was a self-employed construction worker and, um, my mother, um, you know, she worked very hard to take 
whatever jobs that she could to provide for our family. What really became challenging in our family is that my father was a drug addict and an alcoholic. And I grew up very angry. So for the first 18 years of my life, I was an angry kid, man. You know, I thought I hated my dad. I thought I wanted my father dead. And that was just the pain inside. That was the best way I could express the pain that I felt he was causing me. And so I saw my father time and time again, year after year, just disappoint my mom and let the family down because he wasn't providing, he wasn't being a father. Now my parents stayed married. So you can imagine that this knucklehead came home every night. Well, almost every night, right? And um, the fights, the arguments, the yelling, the screaming, the rage that I experienced you know, between my mother and my father because my mom herself came from a dysfunctional family. And she didn't really grow up with a father figure. And her mom was stuck to, to support a family of six kids, right? And, um, and it was hard. And so she came from that. So you can only imagine, she marries a man that's a drug addict and an alcoholic coming from a father who's a gambling um, addict who himself used uh, 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 my mother whose two brothers <clears throat> fought with an addiction two older brothers fought with an addiction to drugs um, and all of that just coupled up into this new family that now she's a part of she got pregnant at 18 years old she had me when she was 19 years old so a baby having a baby right and for the first year of my life, my father took off. He just didn't want to be responsible. He couldn't handle the pressure of being a father, right? So, that's, that's the home I was born into. You know, my father came from a family of dysfunction. Of dysfunction. So my, my grandfather, my dad's dad, was an alcoholic. And I don't know if you notice, I'm using past tense here because my father and my grandfather and my two uncles, my dad's two brothers have all passed away due to addiction. And th this video is not about addiction and overcoming that, but we can go there. We can definitely talk about what that's like to grow up in a home like that. And I probably will address that topic in future videos. But right now, I'm just giving you a little bit of background of where I came from, my story, and how that caused me to have self-doubt in myself. Self-doubt. No confidence in my abilities. So so I'm searching. I'm searching uh, left and right for validation from adults in my life. I'm just, you know, and other and other and other kids. You know, do I get attention from girls? Do 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 people like me? Am I am I likable? Do do the adults in my life approve of me? And and I'm this and I'm this hollow shell of a young teenage boy trying to figure out if I was even worthy. And maybe you can imagine that with those thoughts of, of questioning yourself comes some fear. With that doubt comes fear. Because you try to play it safe as often as possible. You know? And you, you, um, you don't take risks. And when you look back uh, when you look back at your years, you look back at, at, at times in your life where you didn't step out of your comfort zone, when you didn't take chances, you didn't take the risks, you have regret. You have regret that you didn't at least try. Because let me tell you something about failing. You may try and you may fail, but failing is not the end it's just the beginning of your next attempt. If you get a no, that's not the end. That's the beginning of your next attempt. I, I hope that I hope that this is registering with some people right now because I, I really want you to get this. I really want you to get this. So I grew up with fear. I grew up with doubt and questions in my mind whether or not I was good enough. And many, many years later, as I've lived through my 20s, 
and I've lived through my 30s. I'm at a place now where I, I can identify what I was afraid of. And the fact that that fear held me back from even trying. Even trying. And there's moments where I regret that I never tried something. For what? What's the point of not trying at least trying? You're going to learn from it regardless. You just got to toughen up a little bit. You know, toughen your skin a little bit and say, you know what? I'm going to fail sometimes. And I just got to deal with it. But I'm not going to let fear dictate what I'm going to do. I'm not going to let fear dictate me pursuing my passion. And so again, getting back to this question of what am I afraid of? I'm asking you to evaluate what are you afraid of? Even if you're not watching this live, you will some at some point come across this video and you watch it and it'll make you think. And that's 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 what I hope will happen. It'll make you think about yourself and your life and has fear been holding you back? from going after what you know you should be doing. There was a, there's, a, there's a parable that talks about a master who has three servants. And the, and the master is informing his servants, hey, I'm going away for a while. I'm going on a trip. Master didn't say when he was coming back. All that he said was, I'm going to be taking a trip and I'll be gone for a while. <clears throat> And while I'm away, servants, I'm going to give you talents. Um, and I want you to multiply those talents while I'm away. Now, that the master was a shrewd businessman. He didn't play. He closed his deals. He did what it he did what needed to be done to get the job done and produce and multiply. And so for his first two servants, he gave them a certain amount of talents according to what he knew they were capable of. And then the third servant, he also gave that servant talents according to what that servant was capable of. However, he gave that third one less. So it even showed that maybe the servant was aware of the fact that this third servant, that the master was aware that the third servant maybe didn't have the same skill as the other two servants. But, but yet and still, he gave... He gave that, that, that third servant talents to work with. And he told all three of them, while I'm away, multiply this. Be productive with these talents. And when I come back, I'm going to check on what you have done with what I've given you. I'm going to check on what you've done with what I've given you. The talents that I've given you, I want to see what you've done with them. And I hope that, I hope that you're getting where I'm going with this. You have talents and you have gifts and you have things inside of you that make you extremely special and valuable and worthy. What are they? Right? Now, what are you supposed to be doing with them? What are you supposed to be doing with the talents and the gifts and the worth that you have? And please... I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you as you reflect, as you think about what talents you have and your passions, I want you to think past some of those immediate desires of, for example, being a professional singer. You know, I want to be a famous actor or actress. Think past that. Think about, think about purpose in your life that makes other people better just because you are there think about it that way the desires that benefit others just because you're walking in your purpose as you grow as you advance you you reach back and you pull the next person up with you and then they in turn reach back and pull somebody else up with them right so now getting back to this parable, the, the third servant knew what he had to do. The first two went out, 
made their business deals and doubled the talents that they were given. And the third one buried his talents in the ground for fear that he would lose the talents. Knowing that the master was a shrewd businessman, they didn't want to be rebuked for losing the money. Right? So they didn't even try. They just buried their talents in the ground. And that third servant never even tried. So when the master came back from his long trip, he had a talk with the servants. He says, all right, well, show me what you've done with what I've given you. And the first two, hey, look, man, I doubled it. I knew that you are a shrewd businessman and I knew I had to make some deals happen. And here you go. They got praised. Well done. Well done. Right? And the third one says, oh, master, I knew you were a shrewd businessman and I didn't want to lose your money. So I buried it in the ground so that I could give you all back the original amount that you gave me in the beginning. And so the master looks at the servant, that third one, who out of fear did not multiply the gifts or the talents that they have had, that they were given. And that master rebuked that third servant and called him lazy, wicked and lazy. And as a matter of fact, um, <laughs> wasn't happy with that third servant at all, right? When I read that parable, it really stuck with me because I knew that I, for years, was that third, that third servant who was afraid to step out of the comfort zone and multiply the talents that I've been given. I was afraid. And as I reflect back on that now, and as I've had my conversations in, in prayer, um, and just some alone time and watching everybody else and seeing what they're doing, I'm, to a pl I'm at a place now where I'm asking myself, why was I afraid in the first place? Because essentially what's happened is I've been given talents. There's been so many examples in my life as I look back that as I've taken steps outside of my comfort zone, I've seen nothing but blessings. I've seen nothing but provision. I've seen nothing but maybe some lessons were hard lessons to learn. They hurt along the way, but I'm such a better man for it. And I know that you can be a better person for going through tough times, for going through the, the, the successes, for stepping out of your comfort zone, for stepping outside of that fear and saying, you know what? I know I was called for a bigger purpose. It's time for me to just move forward. What happens when you step out of that comfort zone, you, you, you just dive right into that fear. You begin to see that, you know what? What I was afraid of wasn't that bad at all. And as a matter of fact, I'm still alive. I'm still, I'm still kind of floating. Life hasn't ended. My life hasn't crashed. You know what? Maybe maybe it wasn't as bad as I imagined in my head it would be. Why was I so afraid in the first place? Wow. And people have, there's been, there's been people in my life that have come and it seems like it's at strategic times in my life when I needed to hear a word of encouragement. I needed to hear somebody else's story and understand Man, I'm not the only one that struggles with this fear and doubt, questioning myself, whether or not I'm good enough at something, whether or not my thoughts are something that other people want to hear. And and one of the people that I discovered mo most recently was uh, Shameless Maya. She's got an amazing YouTube page. You should definitely check her out. I will put her link uh, at the bottom of this video. And please go check her out and go look at her most recent um video and then go all the way back to five years her very first video um, just to see her growth and that encouraged me because I realized this here was a woman who got in front of a camera and said listen I, I'm afraid I've never promoted myself I've never bragged about myself I've, because there's just been these voices in my head that may say man you know I don't know if 
that's something that I can even do? Will I even be good at it? You know, will people like it? Will people like me? Will people approve of me? But she stuck to her passion. This talent that she had with inside her, within her, she followed this this voice, and 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 it's telling her you gotta just go, you gotta just do this. But I'm afraid to do it. But what if? What if this? And what if that? And what it all comes down to most time is that we're afraid of. What if people don't like me? Right. I think what's more scary to people is what if I'm good at it? What if they love me? You know, what if what my what if my thoughts are exactly what people have been wanting to hear? We don't even think that way. We always think of the the negatives. And so and so when you get to that point and you're saying I just got to go because if I don't I'm always going to regret not trying at least trying right so so Maya her journey up until now in five years and she's done very well to the point that she has almost a million subscribers on YouTube now she's doing very well God bless her and to see <clears throat> to see the growth in an individual and know that I can identify with that journey because for how many years I questioned my own abilities and I buried my own talents in the ground, my own treasure. I buried it in the ground because I didn't know if I was good enough. I, I didn't know if I was good enough. And you know what I realize now? That that fear and doubting myself, it doesn't even matter. That has nothing to do with what my talents allow me to do. I don't, I don't know if that even makes sense, but fear and questioning myself and having doubt has nothing to do with my purpose in life. In fact, the only thing it's been doing is holding me back. The only thing it's been doing. Ah... Uh, I don't want to make this too long for you. I think I'm going to I'm going to stop right there. But I'm 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 very passionate about this. I'm I'm sure you can tell um there's some amazing things that are happening in my life and so much of it started with me stepping out of my comfort zone, stepping into my fears and just taking it head on. And I know that you can have this same um, victory that I feel right now and the same excitement about life and direction for your life. I know you can. And, th and that's why I'm here. I want to help you discover what makes you so great. What makes you so great? What is your purpose? Right? What are your talents? But it all starts with a real conversation about what am I afraid of? So that once we identify those fears, we can write them down on a piece of paper and one by one just snipe them off a list. Why am I even afraid of this? Matter of fact, matter of fact maybe in, in the next video, um, my next entry, we'll talk about um, really heading, looking at those, those fears head on and how to remove those fears from our life. Does that sound good? So I'm going to give you some homework. All right. In the, in the spirit of what am I afraid of? Please make a list of the things that you're afraid of. Don't the, the list can be any length. The list can be any length. Okay. Make a list and um you know, please leave me comments down below. Let me know that you're working on this. If you want to just type your comments down below, your fears, your list of fears down below, please feel more than welcome to do that. Please, I invite you to interact with me. And um, I want to invite you also to join me 
um, on my 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 radio show. I'm here on on the air in Los Angeles. I've been on the radio at 102.3 KJLH on the FM dial since '99. And right now, my segment is called Beyond the Pulpit. Every Sunday evening from 6.30 to midnight, we have real conversation just like this. And I'd love to hear from you. I would absolutely love to hear from you. Okay? And you can join join us live on the internet because you may be in another state. You may be in another city that doesn't broadcast LA radio stations. KJLHradio.com. KJLHradio.com. And... Um, and just join just join the conversation you, you're more than welcome to call in and, and join that conversation um, but, 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 but also connect with me on, on uh, uh, social media connect with me on Twitter and, and, uh, uh, and Instagram those are the ones that I'm on the most and I'll put, I'll put that information below in the comments uh, but again introspective moment I'm challenging you to think about the question, what am I afraid of? What am I afraid of? And your homework, until next time, is to make this list of the things that you are afraid of. Or you can type them down below. God bless you guys. Thank you for even taking some time out to watch this video. I truly appreciate you. And I want you to know, I don't, I don't know you. I don't need to know you personally, but I love you. And I believe the best for your life. And I believe that it can happen. And I want to be with you from day, day zero as you begin your journey or wherever you are in that journey. I want to be there with you and see you succeed and see you win. All right? If, uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please, by all means, um, hit that like button and, and the subscribe button. You'll see I'm very new. I'm just a YouTube baby. I'm a baby. So I have, I have a, a couple of subscriptions. But please, subscribe and be ready. I'll have more videos just like this where I want to connect with you. There's going to be plenty of... Uh, there's going to be a variety of videos that I will post. I'm married to a beautiful woman. We travel a lot. Uh, I plan to 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 um, share some of our travels, some of the, the the reflections that I've gotten from being in other parts of the world, and then also, um, you know, some of the life lessons that I gain every day with my job. I don't just work here in radio in Los Angeles. I am also a youth and a family counselor, and I've been doing that since 2000. So I work with broken families, and I try to help them heal. This is my passion, y'all. This is why I'm doing this. And so now I'm reaching out to you, whoever finds this video, and I want you to know thank you for staying all 28 minutes and listening to this. I really hope that this helped you. Whoever stayed and listened to all of this, I'm, I'm grateful for you. This is not just for me. This is for you. I want to be with you as you win, as you grow, as you become more in love and confident in yourself. Okay? So until next time, God bless you. We'll talk again. My name is David Hernandez. Please leave some comments and feedback. Let me know what you think of this message. Bye-bye.